I'm Jen Dian. I'm Lin. And I'm Ken. So, we're going to cover lines in 2 space and line in 3 space. Equation of vector equation is equal to R equal to RO plus TM. There is two kind of vector equation. The first one, which is 2 space. And 3 space for the vector equation of 2 space, R equal to bracket XY is a positive vector to n points on the line. R0 equals to bracket 0, Y0 is a position vector to known point on the line. M is equal to M1, M2 is a direction vector of the line. The vector equation of 3 space, R equals to bracket X, Y, Z is a position vector of any vectors on the line. R0 equals bracket X0, Y0, Z0 is a position vector to a known points on the line. M equals to M1, M2, M3 is a direction vector of the line. Vector equation of lines can be separated into two parts. It is because there is two space and three space. The final form of two space parametric will equal to x equal to x0 plus tm1, y equals to y0 plus tm2, and the final form of 3 space is equal to x equals x0 plus tm1, y equal to y0 plus tm2, z equals z0 plus tm3. Equation of parametric So now, I will be giving two examples of parametric. There is two kind of question in this section, which is two space and three space. The first example is, example, is the example of two space. And now the equation is given. We know that x is equal to 10 plus 13 t. It is because the point is 10 and 13 with plus t. Y is equal to 6 plus t. It is because the y point is 1 and the other point is 1 with t. The second example is the example of tree space. And the question is given. First, we have to list out S, X, Y, and Z. The point of X is 11 with 3T. The point of Y is Y. Oops, there is a mistake. It should be 2 plus 0T. Z Z is equal to 0 plus 0 t and z is equal to 0 and y is equal to 2. This is the equation of vector r equal to r0 plus t is also equal to bracket x y z bracket equal bracket x0 y0 z0 plus t bracket m1 m2 and m3 this is the example of two space it is given that M is equal to 3, 11. P0 is equal to 2, 7. So now we are going to use vector equation. First, we have to write out X, Y is equal to bracket 2, 7 bracket is equal to plus T three eleven. So this is 
the final answer of vector equation for the next example is the example of G space M is equal to 0 6 negative 11 and P is equal to negative 7 1 5 X Y Z is equal to oops sorry I should add on example of tree space at first x y z is equal to negative 7 1 and 5 plus t bracket 0 6 and negative 11 and this is the final answer of tree space in this part of the video, we'll be looking into the topic called the properties of planes. In this part of the topic, we'll be going through what are the equations of plane in tree space is, how do we convert it from a vector form to a scalar form, and some practices that may help you understand more about this topic. As you recall, the vector form are expressed as the equation shown right here, and the scalar equation form which we will be going through in this video is shown right here. The key component of converting a vector equation to a scalar equation is by finding the normal vector from this equation right here. And if we are able to find and calculate the normal vector, we will be able to form our scalar equation. As you can see what I wrote here, S multiplied by T. These are the non-parallel directions vector parallel to the planes can be formed into a normal vector using the cross multiple method. Just to avoid any confusion, I have used different colors to show a better visual of what I'm multiplying and calculating with. Once we got our final value of the normal vector, where the normal vector is equal to a, b, c, we will be able to form our scalar equation by substituting the points into the scalar equation. ax plus bx plus cz plus d is equal to zero. And here, this equation is our form of scalar equation. Right now, we'll be looking in depth and understanding the properties of planes. The equation shown right here is what we call the scalar equation, where these capital letters A, B, and C are the coefficient that defines the normal plane. As you can see what I wrote, the normal vector is expressed in the symbol of N, with an arrow on top of it. Now let's go through some examples that can help us how we can apply this equation, so on and so forth. Let's say if a given point, point M, where X is 5, Y is negative 3, and Z is negative 2, and the given equation is expressed X plus 2Y minus 3Z minus 5 is equal to 0. And the question wants us to determine if the point shown here lies on the plane. Well, to do that, all we need to do is to substitute this given point, which is m, into the equation ax plus by plus cz plus d is equal to 0. Similar as the given equation, all we need to do is just to sub the points into the equation, where a would be 5, b would be negative 3, and c would be negative 2 simple as that after we substitute it all we need to do is multiply it and match whether if the left hand side is equal to the right hand side if the final answer are equal just like the answer we got here zero is equal to zero then the point lies on the plane 
and that is one of the examples of how we will be using the scale equation to determine if the point lies on the plane. The next example would be a little bit more complicated because we are requested to determine a scalar equation using a vector equation shown below. For this method, we need to understand the equation given first, then see how we can find a solution to form our scalar equation. As we can see, our given equation here, a vector equation, the unknown values of s and t are the non-parallel direction vectors parallel to the plane can be multiplied together both group of s and t using the cross multiple method to form our normal vectors and if we did manage to form our normal vectors we'll be able to form our scalar equation as you can see here to use the cross multiple method we have placed the two groups where our s is above and our t is below. Then we cross multiply it. Here we can see I use different colors so that I won't make any confusion for you guys. After we After we cross multiply it and we then sum it up and get the normal vectors and the value we got would be equal to 4, negative 4, negative 4. So now we got the value of the normal vectors. We can then substitute the points to this scalar equation of ax plus by plus cz plus d is equal to 0. And there, we will just have to plug out the A, B, C and place the points into the equation. And that's how we get our final equation, which is the scalar equation. Planes and lines in tree space. So in planes and lines in tree space, we have parallel and coincident, parallel and distinct, and also two parallel planes and one intersecting place and so on. Two lines in R3. Two lines in R3 which are intersecting, which means they only intersect at exactly one point. Two lines which are parallel, we have two types of parallel lines, parallel and distinct, and parallel and coincident. Two lines which are skew, which means they are not intersecting and non-parallel. Planes and lines in R3, we have the intersecting line, which means they only intersect at one point. We have parallel and distinct lines, and also parallel and coincident lines. We can have skew lines in R3, but the difference between the dimension of the space and the object must be at least 2 to have the skew lines. We are now going to talk about the intersections of planes. There are the intersections in 2 planes and also intersections in 3 planes. We are going to further discuss about the intersections of 3 planes. I am now going to draw a diagram of the intersections of three planes. Firstly, we have all three planes are parallel. What this means is that normal from the first plane and the second plane and the third plane are all equal. So we have three types of parallel planes. Firstly, we have parallel and coincident, which means all three planes are parallel and the normals are equal. Secondly, we have parallel and distinct, which means all three planes are parallel, but all three planes have different values. Lastly, two coincident and one distinct plane. We can also, also call this as the combination plane. Secondly, we have all three planes which are intersecting, which means n1 is not equal to n2 and is not equal to n3. So in this intersection, we have three different examples, the first of which is intersect at a line. What this means is that of all the three planes, they only intersect at one line. 
Secondly, we have intersected intersection at one point, which means in the three planes, they only intersect at one point. Lastly, we have intersection pairwise. As we can see, this is the top view of three planes intersecting, and we can label them as pi1, pi2, and pi3. Lastly, there are also two parallel planes and one intersecting. What this means is that two planes are parallel to each other and one plane is intersecting both of the parallel planes, which means n1 is equal to n2, n1 is not equal to n3, and n2 is not equal to n3, which means n3 is the intersecting plane. We have also two coincident plane and one intersection plane which is also the same as two parallel planes and one intersecting. So for two coincident planes and one intersecting, it is consistent. What consistent means is that it has one or more solutions. For intersecting pairwise, it is inconsistent, which means that it has no solutions. For intersection at a line, it is consistent as it has one or more solutions. And for intersecting at one point, it is inconsistent as it has no solutions. We can find whether the planes are consistent or inconsistent by using the volume formula, which is n1 dot product open bracket n2 cross product n3 close bracket. And we can use this formula in either way as we can swap n1, n2 and n3 in different positions. If then the volume equals to zero, we can solve the system, which we can either find whether the normals are consistent or inconsistent. And if the volume is not equal to zero, we know that the vectors are non clopanar So now we are going to do a question which asks us to describe each system of planes and if possible, solve the system. So the first equation, 2x plus y plus 6z equals to 5. This will be equation 1. 5x plus y minus 3z equals to 1. This will be equation 2. And 3x plus 4y plus 15z equals to 9. This will be equation 3. We will then find the normals of all three equations. So for normal 1, we will find the numbers in front of x, y, and z. For equation 1, it will be 2, 1, and 6. For normal 2, we will use equation 2, which is 5, 1, and negative 3. And for normal 3, we will use the same thing, as it will be 3, 2, and 15. We will now use the volume formula, which is n1, open bracket, n2, cross product, n3. Close bracket. We will then use the value of n2, which is 5, 1, and negative 3. And we we'll have to repeat it one more time. So we write 5, 1, and negative 3 again. We we'll use the volume value of n3, which is 3, 2, and 15. And we will repeat them again. We will then cross multiply the numbers to find a value which will equal to 21, negative 84, and 7. We will then sub this into the equation of n1 dot product bracket 21, negative 84, and 7. We will then sub n1 value into the equation, which is 2, 1, and 6. And we will dot product 21, negative 84, and 7. We will then get 2 times 21, which will equal to 42, and 1 times negative 84, so it's negative 84, and 6 times 7, which is 42. And when we add all these numbers up together, we we'll get 0. What this means is that now we would have to solve the system, which the system could either be consistent or inconsistent and it could either intersect at a point 
or intersect at a line or intersect pairwise. Now we will use the equations to solve the system. Firstly, we will use equation 2 minus equation 1 to eliminate the y value. So 5x plus y minus 3z equals to 1. Uh, equation 2. So 2x plus y plus 6z equals 5. That will be equation 1. So we will minus these two equations, which we will get 3x minus 9z equals to negative 4. So secondly, we will want to find another equation which will eliminate the y value. So we will do equation 1 times 2, which we will get 4x plus 2y plus 12z equals to 10. And we use equation 3, which is 3x plus 2y plus 15z equals to 9 as we would want equation 1 to minus equation 3 so we eliminate the y value so we will get x minus 3z equals to 1 now 3x minus 9z equals to negative 4 to be the same as x minus 3z equal to 1 we would use 3x minus 9z equals negative 4 to be divided by 3 so we will get x minus 3z equals negative 4 over 3. It would, we would then write down the second equation of x minus 3z equal to 1. We would then minus the first equation and the second equation. We would then get 0x plus 0z equals to 7 over 3. Hence, we would get no solution. Therefore, the planes are intersecting pairwise. That's the end of the chapter. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned something new. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.